Joining us on the panel today are Labor MP Amanda Rishworth and Liberal MP Jason Falinski. Thanks to both of you for being here. Uh, Jason, the Minister for Indigenous Australians, Ken Wyatt, basically saying he, if we're going to have a, a referendum, then it has to take place before the next election, and he basically thinks it should be small bore, simply about recognising the First Nations people and not necessarily en enshrining a voice to Parliament in the referendum. Yeah, well, that's been Ken's view for a while. I mean, there's a lot of discussions going on. People are talking to a lot of different stakeholders, including the Labor Party. Um, Linda, Bernie and Ken White get on very well. Julie and Lisa and Pat Dotson get on very well. Uh, obviously, all the stakeholders involved. The government is determined, and I think the parliament is determined, to recognise Indigenous Australians in our constitution. But we want to make sure that we get this right, because if we don't, it will set, it, uh, it will set that cause back a generation. But some, some people here, we want to make sure we get this right as a way of stonewalling and procrastinating and postponing. And I understand their cynicism, and I can understand that completely. But, you know, the Liberal Party has a proud history in this area. The first Indigenous senator was um, a member of the Liberal Party. The first Indigenous um, Australian who was a minister for Indigenous Affairs is Ken White. The first cab Indigenous cabinet minister was a Liberal. And, of course, we were the party that recognised and took the referendum in 1967 with the support of the Labor Party. These things get done with bipartisanship, and that's what we need to strive for in this particular situation. Amanda, you know, uh, Ken Wyatt's been accused by the uh, Indigenous communities of not consulting them when it comes uh, to this particular issue. I think I read somewhere they said that they haven't been consulted in the last two months months or so. Do you think Ken Wyatt speaking to the wider Australia rather than just to one community? Well, at the moment, um, if we want to achieve constitutional recognition, we're going to have to start working very quickly, uh, especially if we want this referendum uh, before, the, uh, before the Australian people, before the next election. Uh, because what you have to do is make sure that uh, First Nations people have a voice and they are properly consulted. And uh, Linda Burney, our Shadow Minister, has been very clear that Labor will be guided by the voices of First Nations people. But of course, you've also got to bring the wider Australian community along with you uh, when it comes to constitutional change. So uh, you actually have to uh, do both things, ensuring that uh, First Nations people's voice is at the centre, but also make sure that you're communicating with uh, the wider Australian population. And that is uh, a difficult job. It does need bipartisanship, and so uh, we need to be working towards that. But of course, also respecting the Uluru Statement from the heart. Um, uh, that is, was a really important statement, and we need to make sure that we are respecting that as well. And Amanda, are, are you, do you basically agree that the referendum has to, has to take place before the next election? and it shouldn't be concurrent with the next election because the minister was saying if you put it on the same ballot as the election then it becomes despoiled by all of the other things that are going on in a federal election campaign. Well, look, I want to be guided, as Linda Burney has said, by the voices of First Nations people. Um, but if we are going to achieve that, the government is going to have to really get on with the job. There are a lot of steps that need to be taken before we can put a referendum to the people. Con consulting with First Nations people, uh, the, ca the education campaign, the question to the parliament. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, so to have that achieved and not have that uh, half done or, or or not done properly requires the government to really get on and do the job. And as Linda Burney has said, our Shadow Minister, uh, we're already out there consulting with what, uh, uh, what might be the design of a voice to parliament, what might be uh, in a constitutional question. Uh, but we need to get on with the job now because it's not something that you can just put uh, quickly to the Australian people without uh, the work done beforehand. Uh, Jason, I mean, that's the issue, isn't it? There's a lot of work to be done, as Amanda said. Do you th yep. It's a very tight deadline. Can it be achieved? Well, we're going to try. We're going to try. I mean, that's the, that's the key to this, that, uh, you know, Australia is an ambitious nation. We've done a lot of ambitious things, and this is one of those ambitious projects. This is another step in the journey towards reconciliation. Uh, it's important that we, we give it a go. Um, and look, uh, as Amanda said, I wish I'd said it that well myself, um, that this requires bipartisanship and both and everyone involved to come to the discussion with goodwill. And I think particularly not to make um, uh, perfect the enemy of the good. So there will need to be steps along the way that we take. 
We're, no, we're not everyone's going to be happy, but it is a step forward and we need to take those steps. Uh, Jason and Amanda, let's, uh, let's pivot now and talk about the drought because the National Farmers Federation has released a statement about the government's policy uh, this week and also this week the Prime Minister announced a new cash payment to drought-stricken farmers. That was just after a fairly explosive uh, sequence of interviews with, uh, with Alan Jones and Alan Jones' appearance on Sky News. Uh, Jason, it's, uh, it's good to know that Alan Jones can get the Prime Minister to do what his own ministers and voters well, can't. Well, can I say that um, sometimes Alan Jones watches this program and he sends me text messages on my performance, so I'll be very careful. <laughs> he was at the gym last time he told me he was watching, so, you know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he sends you notes about my performance. No, no. I, used to, I used to work for the guy. Well, I'll ask uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, uh, but seriously, what, what do you make of that? This was something that hadn't previously been announced. It's, a, it's giving $13,000 to, to couples and $7,500 to individuals. It's going to cost about $13 million a year. There'd been no flagging of it. The National Farmers Federation said that it, they weren't given any notice. Mm. Um, so this does seem to have been a consequence of the influence of the media personality? Um, look, I think... Um, I don't think that's illegitimate, though, um, to be honest. I think Alan Jones obviously speaks to a large number of people in uh, rural and regional areas, particularly in New South Wales and Queensland, where this drought is, is at its most acute. Um, he was feeding back a lot of the... Um, information that he's getting and the feedback he's getting from people who listen to him. So it's not a, a bad thing for a government to respond to um, the feedback that they're getting from on the ground what's going on, whether it's from Alan Jones, whether it's from financial counsellors, whether it's from Barnaby Joyce. They, they're all legitimate things that any democratic government should do. Um, Josh, but I've got to say that the the truth is the only way to solve this drought is through um, rain, as, as David Littleproud says, need, need deep rain. And no You're government can make rain, it rain. Are you? No. Yeah. But, 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 <laughs> let me just push back you on that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, yes, sorry, of course. I just want to follow, yeah. finish this point f first, because there is a the criticism that comes of the government's drought mm. policy mm. is that not just that it's too little, too late, but that it's somewhat ad hoc, that yeah, it's somewhat absolutely. reactive. Yeah. That there is an overall plan. You know, the National Farmers Federation this week they've said we want we need to have some kind of plan for drought, even when we're not in drought, and that the government's yeah. sort of asleep at the wheel. We need a drought forum. We need a drought committee. We need some yeah. kind of holistic thing, yeah. and that there's this sense of like everyone's hair is on fire in the government and they're throwing cash at the problem. So when you go on a, on a radio show yeah. and someone berates you, I mean the Prime Minister went on John Laws' show two days later and John Laws said, why do you allow yourself to get harangued in the way that Alan Jones harangues you? A lot of people felt it was a sign of weakness that you let Alan get away with, with what he did. And how did the Prime Minister answer that? Uh, the, well, <laughs> I'm sure in an exemplary fashion from your perspective, <laughs> the perspective, Jason, yes. but how, are you gonna, how can the party bring together some kind of coherent strategy that doesn't seem like it's just putting out fires? So we have two problems, and they're specific problems that are difficult in a drought. The first one is that this is an acute drought and we're getting to the very pointy end of it. So any government needs to be responsive and agile in the way that it deals with an emergency of this nature. The second point is that we have a long-term strategy around water security and water infrastructure, and I can bore you with quoting, you know, 1.28 billion for 21 co-funded local water infrastructure projects, a billion dollars with the New South Wales government to build more infrastructure around water. That's the long-term plan. The short-term plan is how do we make sure that good farmers don't leave the farms before it starts raining because that's when you get what you know it, you just get a destructive nature which then takes you a generation to recover so what the government is trying to do at this point is be as responsive and agile as we can to the crisis as it emerges and also to cut um, to cut and um, and to tailor our responses in in a manner and form. I mean, one thing I was going to mention today, but I might do it at the end, is the people who won the Nobel Prize um, this year for economics. And the, the, what they found was, if you really want to alleviate poverty, the the best way to do that is to have a thousand experiments and test which one works. And to a certain extent, that's what we're trying to do at the moment. Is it time for an experiment, though? Just, I mean, Jason, that's the thing. Amanda, I want to bring you in. Is oh, it yeah. time for Look. for an experiment now, or should we already have a drought policy? I mean, this is this is, drought isn't a surprise. It's been going on for quite some time now. Uh, is it time for an experiment, or should we have a firm drought policy already in place? Well, you're absolutely right that um, this payment, which was announced by the Prime Minister after pressure from a radio host is, is a modest one and goes to people, uh, it extends their payment from four to four and a half years. It's not, uh, it's not a panacea. Now, there is no panacea uh, to drought. Jason's right with that. But we do need a long-term drought 
strategy. And of course, we need immediate relief now and we need medium and long term strategies as well. And the government has uh, spent money on a coordinator general who's been out in communities and has delivered a report to government in April. It hasn't been made public and I would really call on the government if they want to have an honest conversation about uh, solutions and priorities to release that and work together uh, with the opposition. Anthony Albanese has uh, uh, sent a letter to the Prime Minister just this week saying this is becoming a national emergency and to put a cabinet together, a drought cabinet together of all sides. Um, both sides of government uh, as well as the crossbench um, uh, and actually look at what we can do and work together because one thing that uh, whether it's the National Farmers Federation or, or farmers or rural communities are saying is they don't want it to chop and change. They don't want it to be ad hoc. They need to know that it's not going to change with different prime ministers or different governments. It needs to be uh, everyone having a buy-in. At the moment the government still seems to be making this uh, a, a political issue and that's really I think very frustrating uh, for everyone so we we actually need uh, to have everyone buy in but the government should start by releasing the drought coordinator general's report because I think that would help us with a plan going forward and I'm not sure why they won't do that uh, instead we are seeing these ad hoc modest uh, modest commitments rather than a proper strategy Amanda one controversial statement recently that went public was saying, look, if you haven't made money on a farm in more than five years, maybe you should think about getting out of the business. Why do you need to be farming? Do we need to reevaluate exactly how much we are farming if the climate keeps changing and the drought gets worse? Well, look, I think our farmers do an amazing job and they are so, uh, our agricultural sector is, is really critical uh, to our economy. There does need to be adaptation when it comes to climate change, but that is something we can work with farmers and rural communities on. But the money needs to be there, the science needs to be there, uh, the support needs to be there and the strategy needs to be there. So there are things that we can put in place for the long term about how we ad adapt to a change in climate and how our farmers do that. Uh, but we need a strategy in place. We need to give them hope uh, and we need to give them proper concrete things we can work towards as a whole community as an, and as a country. And I think that's uh, really important. That's why I think a, a drought cabinet would be a really good thing to assemble, have everyone in the room, have this conversation and make sure that we've got short term, medium term and long term things uh, in place to uh, uh, to make sure our rural communities can survive. Amanda, Jason, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks Enjoy so much for coming in. Great to talk to you.